Our friend is here, Bill Lockwood, writer, radio host at America Liberty with Bill Lockwood, a teacher in Wichita Falls, Texas, preacher at Our Park Church of Christ. And Bill is here every last Tuesday of the month, almost every once in a while his schedule doesn't allow. Bill, good morning. Thank you for coming. Good morning, Jesse. How are you this morning? Amazing. All is well. How have you been? That's great. Wonderful. You know, we've had a lot of rain here. It's just uh, raining right now. As a matter of fact, a lot, a lot more rain than we normally get this time of year. So um, maybe that'll be good things for, for this area of Texas. Yeah, Texas, with all those illegals and homeless people on the street, it needs a good washing uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's... Boy, that's an ongoing problem, isn't it? It is. You know, a lot of people move from Los Angeles to Texas because they said Texas yeah. is better than California, right? I mean, from California to Texas. And I was looking at a report where right. in Houston and Dallas, homeless people, illegal aliens, the same thing is, is out of control in California is now happening in Texas uh, in Houston, it's being reported that the police officers are not responding to the crime because they're afraid of being accused. And uh, and I've always yeah. said that at some point you have to take a stand because you can't run from evil. You have to deal with it. Well, you know what, Jesse? I believe that the uh, the Marxist stormtroopers have already arrived and uh, they are they're also the illegals that are pouring over our border from not simply Mexico, but from many foreign nations are already here. Then you have the, the political chaos going on, uh, led by Joe Biden, who really is basically following Marxist, uh, Marxist ideology and allowing this very thing to occur on the streets of America. At the same time, the, the, the administration, just as it was with the Obama administration, putting intense pressure upon the uh, local police forces uh, to, uh, in order to that really to handcuff them so they cannot even do their job any longer. Yeah. And that's going on so much that now the police forces are depleted with resources and manpower. The people are not signing up for police. The crime is rising in the cities. This is exactly a Marxist revolution and led by Black Lives Matter, which claims to be a Marxist organization. They, this is exactly what's going on, and the, the Biden administration is sponsoring it, and this is what's taking place in particularly Democratic-led cities across America. Uh, George Floyd, so-called family, was is invited to the White House today, I believe. Military return in week. As you mentioned, defunding police. What do you think about George Floyd? family being invited to the White House, an unemployed, unemployed drug addict is being treated yeah. as though he was some decent guy just walking down the road and the cops just had nothing else to do but to, but to go and kill him. What do you think of them inviting George Floyd family to the White House? You know what? I, I just want, want to say this, that um, isn't it amazing that the Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the and the, the Marxists, the marching out of our universities, have no better hero than a drug <laughs> addict and a lawbreaker that such as George Floyd to hold up as their as their icon. They even have a, a George Floyd square in Minneapolis. At the same time, I'm not saying that he should have been killed, and I think it was an accidental death. It was. However, to hold him up as a hero, some kind of some kind of a cultural icon who's really who's really a thug is absolutely incredible and it shows you exactly where our people are marching toward thuggery just generally speaking and it's so sad that the Biden administration sponsors this it's amazing to see good being called evil and evil promoted as good just think of the influence this is going to have on young black Boys and girls who don't have decent parents to raise them. They're being lied in the schools already. They're going to grow up thinking that George Floyd was a hero and they're going to want to be like him. That's right. That's exactly right. And you see it in the public school system. You see the, the minority communities that are um, more influenced by what comes out of the prison culture 
in the way they wear their clothes, in the in the thug reactions that they're participating in, in the music they listen to, in in the in, in the language they use, in the drugs that they're participating in, in in the fact that they're lawless, and many of them uh, obviously disrespect. There's so much disrespect for authority that it's uh, it's absolutely. Um, I think it's really at a critical level in our country that we have a generation of people who are so disrespecting of authority and those above them. And this is what exactly what we're seeing. And George Floyd represented all of that. So that's why they like him. Yeah. I never thought I'd see the day when uh, 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 generations of people disrespect their fellow man. They have no love, no respect for the elderly, no respect for themselves. It just blows my mind to see these people out of control and no one in a big way, you know, a bunch of folks are not denouncing it. They're afraid, even white people are afraid to say black. They won't even mention the word now for fear of right. being called racist. Yeah, that's, it's, it's just incredibly sad. I don't know if you uh, rec- uh, knew this, and perhaps so, but the, that Eric Nelson, who was the defense attorney for uh, Derek Chauvin, has asked for a new trial. And on... on- all at grounds. Number one, that the the jury was tainted. Yeah. Number one, I mean, there was uh, the Black Lives Matter had had uh, threatened, of course, all across this nation. Uh, different cities were boarding up because they were thinking about the outcome of the trial that uh, Chauvin would be exonerated from a murder tr- uh, from a murder conviction, and that was going on. Not only so, but you have Maxine Waters going there to the streets, and and, and even the president declaring that. They could need to come to the right outcome on this particular trial. Not only so, but one of the jurors even stated publicly that she was afraid for her own property and property damage had they not come to a guilty verdict on, on the murder charges. So the, Eric Nelson has filed for a, a retrial on, on that and, and other grounds as well. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, in, in charge up there is Keith Ellison, who's the attorney general, and he is yeah. fighting it tooth and nail. Uh, he says, oh, no, we're not going to have that. Uh, they need they need this uh, conviction to stick. But be that as it may, we're turning law and order upside down in our nation. There was a black guy on that jury, too, who admitted that this was, and I don't have the exact words, but what he was saying that this was an opportunity for justice for black people. It didn't matter if, if the officer was guilty or not. In his mind, he's getting justice against white people. Uh, let's, let's think about that for just a moment. R- right there, that that is going all the way back to the LBJ period, Lyndon B. Johnson period, where we are in, he, LBJ invited Americans to think on a co- in collectivist terms that black people had been mistreated in the past, generally speaking, and therefore now we're going to we're going to tilt the law and tilt all the regulations, admissions, and, uh, and, and assistance programs in the government. We're going to tilt them in favor of minorities. W- what does that invite us to do? It invites us to ignore, ignore personal integrity and personal responsibility yeah. and individual justice and individual responsibility and whether or not Jesse Lee Peterson himself it is a credible individual, and we're, in, and we're invited to examine everything on collectivist terms. That is Marxism at its core. You don't overturn history of racism, even if, if there has been that. You don't overturn that by overturning justice in a particular case. All you're doing is inviting the country to in, be enraged and inflamed in collectivist terms. Yeah. And that's a collectivist ideal, but that shows what has happened to the black community. They're thinking only in collectivist terms. They don't even think about individual responsibility, individual integrity, and whether or not I can myself on my own make it. No, no, they don't think that way at all. Uh, you know, one thing that is really concerning for me is that they are weakening the military. They're deliberately doing it. I mean, just doing it. And right. I'm thinking if they weaken the military and our enemies, China or whomever it might be, decide to attack us, they're not going to ask, are you a Democrat or Republican? Are you black or white? Are you this or that? They're just going to kill whomever they can kill in America. 
And so I don't understand why they were weak in the military when they were putting their own lives at risk by doing that. Well, you know, President Obama started that purge of conservatives in the military when he was president. And, uh, and the, entire, uh, the entire flow of our country is toward a Marxist direction. And so now when it invades the military, we are in serious, serious, yeah. serious trouble. Yeah. This has come out now with the Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer being relieved of duty uh, from the Denver, Colorado, uh, from, the, from the, the squadron that is there, for he put out on a video speaking about a privately published book speaking about Marxism in the military ranks, and he goes through. Matter of fact, one of the articles that came out just this week, uh, I think he was interviewed by Newsmax, Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer, and uh, he had this to say. He said that military personnel were all required to watch a video that was sponsored by 1619 Project that basically tells us that America is racist at its core. And so turning the military itself, is, that, is, that is absolute falsehood and propaganda that the military was required to watch. And he's talking about these kinds of politics that are in the military. So they relieved him of duty, but he is exactly right. As a matter of fact, there's another uh, man, I'm, try I'm trying to think of his name. I'll, I need to look at it. Oh, Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller from the American, uh, American First Legal. And he is now, with the Freedom of Information Act, act asking the Department of Defense for material in which the allegations are that they have targeted conservatives and are seeking to eliminate conservatives from the top brass in the military and uh, following Marxist lead and following woke politics. And so Stephen Miller is asking for paperwork on this particular uh, area. And of course, all this comes in the wings of Lohmeyer's relieving of being relieved of duty. Uh, but I want to say this regarding Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer. Uh, the man, General, uh, General Whiting, who relieved him of duty, he said, well, he is not fit to lead. I want to say this. No, Lohmeyer is the real leader. Yeah. Lohmeyer, the one who stands up for principle and what is right versus wrong, he's the real leader. It's the Whitings and others who are following along the Marxist lead and simply following the, the world, the one world government, council and formulations, goose stepping. The United States Code of Military Justice demands that uh, requires that military leaders do not criticize their, the, the chain of command above them. This is from the time of George Washington. Do not criticize the chain of command that goes above them, nor even the senators and the administration. So consequently, during Obama's period, you know, military leaders, many conservatives, they didn't speak out against Obama. They didn't say anything about it. Yeah. And they, they didn't even appear sometimes at uh, conservative rallies. Do You know, when Trump was in office, that was completely reversed. Yeah. And so many of them, including retired General Mattis and others, have spoken out, said we didn't have good leadership. Other generals, and there's about 20, 20 some odd leaders in the military who spoke out specifically pointedly against President Trump, called him an unfit leader, and said that they were, they, one of them said he was sickened by the fact that he had uh, the way cleared for him by the security as he went into Lafayette Square, as if to, as if to suggest that they should have allowed his, his uh, motorcade to be ransacked by the rioters. It's absolutely incredible, but these officers should have been relieved of duty, but instead, they are getting a free pass, and that's what's happening in our military. It shows which direction our military is tilted, and it's very, very frightening. Um, and even in the military, they, the military is purging patriot and decent people by calling them extremists. So they're taking out the real men of the military and putting in uh, people who were all, who was only there to destroy. It's just my blowing to see it. Um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, the schools where they are now openly mandatory in Washington and other states, I think, to teach anti-whiteness uh, under the under the false pretense of racism. They're telling all children that white people are evil, that they are mean and nasty, that they're racist simply because they're white, and they're teaching it to, to white children and black children. Um, 
when these kids grow up to become young adults, it's going to be hell on earth. But what I don't understand is why are white parents still sending their children to these schools knowing that they are being taught this? I mean, they know in advance. It's not something they discover later. Why do they still risk their children like that? Right. Well, you know what? That's, that's a good question. And, and uh, one of the answers is simply that many of parents are too weak in, in order to lead their children. But, uh, but think about this also, that we have had a, a socialistic style country from the time of Woodrow Wilson. It's kind of, it's gained momentum, but we've had socialism in place. And what does that mean? Well, instead of a, a one parent, or, or I should say, a, a, a one of the parents making the money for the household, Usually the father would do that. Yeah, the, the father. Would stay home and yes. raise the children. Right. Our socialistic policies have made it mandatory that you can't even make a living until both parents are at work because the value of our dollar has declined so much. So the government has us over a barrel in some respects. So I'm going to say that just out front. Number two, we're just too weak. Too many parents are too weak. They have priorities that are not what they should be as far as teaching and raising their children as they ought to be raised. And so turning them over to the public schools that are teaching in many areas, teaching this racism, which is basically Marxism. Let's think about Marxism for a moment. Karl Marx wanted to divide society along the workers and, and the, those that were the elite. And he wanted the workers of the world to unite and he wanted to have class conflict between the different strata of society. Marxism simply takes it on the basis of race. And so we're creating class conflict, now race conflict, and that's Marxist teaching. So that's Marxism being taught in the public schools via the 1619 Project and other, other modes of teaching. That's exactly what's being taught, and it's stirring up insurrection, rebellion, and it, it is going to be, absolutely as you put it, it's going to be... Uh, 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 I guess it's just going to be hell on earth, really, is what it's going to be yeah. when we have that going on in the streets of America. I, um, I've i said over and over again, and Bill, you know you can correct me, and I don't mind at all, but I've noticed that the only purpose for black people on earth is to destroy. And I've noticed over the years that when, when the, whomever controls it, George Soros, Liberal whites want to really destroy a community, a neighborhood, a country, or whatever. They put the, they deliberately put blacks in the forefront because they know that the blacks are going to destroy it. And the blacks have no shame about it. They're happy to do it. I, when Obama first ran for president, I said, no, Obama would turn America into a ghetto. Um, I said, don't put these radical black women and black men in the in the in the police departments and the mayors and and city councils and say all they're going to do is destroy and they will happily do it. And the folks did it anyway. And now the country, like you mentioned Obama, Obama, what Obama started is not over. It's still happening. It's destruction of the country. That's right. And I noticed that these radical black mayors, liberal, I mean, uh, females and male mayors and police chiefs and others, they are nothing but destroying. Even that far-left liberal radical lesbian mayor of Chicago, she said out loud, I'm not going to allow yeah. white people to interview me anymore. Can you imagine if a black uh, a white mayor has said that about black reporters? How come, am I wrong when I say that black people are on earth for destruction and not to build? Well, I'll say, I'll say it this way, that that's exactly what Marxists and communists have always wanted to do, and that is to utilize minorities as a tool to, and weaponize the minority community as a tool to destroy a culture. The communists have said that so clearly in the past. That's exactly what they wanted to do. As they would put it back in the 1930s and 1940s, they would say out loud and in print, that they wanted to mobilize the Negro population in order to bring down America. Yeah. That was their intent, and to mobilize them 
by appealing to their minority status as somehow always being discriminated against. Whether slavery or not is in the past has nothing to do with it. Right. It's just always to make those appeals to a minority group and to th get them to think in collectivist terms. So today, it is so sad. You even have black churches, supposedly conservative churches across the spectrum, black churches, they're involved in this political action uh, against what is so-called white supremacy, white racism, all of this kind of thing going on in the black churches. Yeah. They have been politically mobilized for a long time, while at the same time, churches at the time of an election receive notices across the board, such as where I am, from the IRS saying, by the way, do not log into political issues. You can't do anything political. You can't endorse a particular candidate. You know, the black churches, they don't care anything about that. They <laughs> They have been they've been sponsoring they've been sponsoring the Martin Luther King uh, holiday. Matter of fact, back when it was suggested that Martin Luther King's holiday be put as a national holiday, it was a political football. Who do you think were the first people involved in that political football? The black churches. Yeah. Well, what what happened there? They've been mobilized in this area, and it's it is so sad. But they're just it is the pawns in a Marxist game is what it is. Do the black people, the preachers and others, so-called intellectuals and others, and the preachers who are not supposed to be intellectuals, but they are, do they know that they are destroying or are they so evil that they think what they're doing is right? Even though it's not working, it only brings up, how come they can't see that nothing is happening but destruction through them? Why can't they see that? You know what? It's... I've known some men who might consider uh, good men that are black preachers and men that I have looked at, at on in the past as, as just good men. However, they cannot get past, apparently, the whole black-white racial thing. They can't get past it. Everything they see is in a lens of color. And that's how they want to interpret the entire world. And no one is allowing them or no one is assisting them to see that that is racist in and of itself or that is a that is that itself is what they supposedly oppose. But they're seeing everything in a very racial in racial tones. And so consequently, uh, they they it's, a, it's like it's like a person who can't get past some of the problems in his or her life right. to get down to what the root cause is, and that is sin in my heart. Yeah. And they yes. cannot get past all of, them, all of those issues to see that's what's happening here, that I myself have anger and hate toward white people and white community, and they just don't want that. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that at all. No, instead, we just keep it on these political tones, and so they become activists for the black movement in America. And these are the preachers. It's amazing. But they're activists for, for a Marxist move. This is so mind-blowing to see it. I never thought that I would see black Americans go down like this. When I was growing up, it wasn't like that. Um, I don't, right. you know, around me, it wasn't like that. It's just amazing to see right. blacks being so demoralized and so angry and so out of it that they just don't care. What went through your mind when Lord, it was uh, brought out that this woman, Laura Lightfoot, was not was going to outwardly discriminate against whites and say it out loud and no problem? What went through your mind when you heard about that? I thought, okay, that is indicative of the fact. It's a marker that we as a nation have been completely brainwashed to think along the same lines that she's thinking. And not to speak out, not to say anything, but then we are completely, as a whole people, have been brainwashed to a particular point. That that would be allowed to fly in this nation is absolutely more than incredible. It is, as you put it, mind-blowing, <laughs> but it is absolutely, um, it's horrendous. It's absolutely horrendous that that should take place. Bill, can you stay with us a little longer? Sure, that'd be great. All right. All right, folks, welcome back. We're going to get to your Super Chats and D-Lives in a minute. Talking with Bill Lockwood, a man with no fear. So, Bill, I want to take some calls for you, too, but tell the folks how to get to your radio show, your website, uh, writing for 
uh, the Bible brand and all the good things you're doing. All right. Well, thank you, Jesse. You bet. Well, the, the radio show is American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, and that is out of Wichita Falls, and it's also in Lubbock and Abilene. Uh, but the website is exactly the same. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com. And one can go there and, uh, and look at that. And then th I have two YouTube channels in which uh, one of them is called American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, and one can simply subscribe to it. That's a YouTube channel. And then another YouTube channel is Writing for the Bible Brand, in which I take simply biblical passages and look at them in, in an eight-minute segment. I usually sit on my horse when I'm doing this and talk about the Bible and what's occurring in America. So that's those are some of my venues. Of course, then also... I preach weekly at the Iowa Park Church of Christ, and those are all also published or um, put out, I should say, uh, on the iowaparkcoc.org website. So one can go there and look at my sermons uh, from Sunday to Sunday. And I know um, I'm, I'm asking the people to support you as well financially because uh, people who are standing up for good are under attack by social media and everyone. They're trying to stop it. And these folks want to promote evil and shut down good. So I hope that the people donate to your site, support your church, and all that good stuff. Well, thank you, Jesse. You know, I always run in the red, so it's yeah. great to have that. Appreciate you doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Bill, uh, so what is the end goal of all this, you think? Communism. A communist dictatorship. And Just a communist, Marxist, dick. Yeah. Do you think that, I mean, we, I know we don't know the future, but you think that's going to happen in America? Well, we have a perfect Marxist storm going on right now. You think about the different areas. Number one, education has been absolutely taken over by Marxists, capitulating our whole educational system at the university level to Marxists. Now, that's that's going on. That is predominant. I'm not saying that they're not good Christian universities or good Christians and, and conservatives in the university at the university level. There are many of them that are good professors that do so. But the predominant, but the predominant idea is, is communist Marxist concepts, neo-Marxism at the, the university level. In our public school system, the same thing is occurring because of this, it is once again controlled by a national education association which demands that we follow the same and goose step to the same ideas as is in the Black Lives Matter. And we have to recognize white supremacy and we have quotas as far as uh, how many children, for example, are put into de detention facilities and on and on it goes or how many children are kicked out of the classroom. It's, it's all based on racial concepts on the assumption that we are a racist society against minorities. So we have the educational system that is completely leaning, tilted toward a Marxist orientation. That now you have the military. The military also has, has the same tilting in it, and it's been brought out by Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer, as well as others. Stephen Miller is now, of course, one of the attorneys that had worked for Trump, now at a law firm, demanding the DOD to give paperwork on how they have targeted the supposed extremists in society and how they have purposely tried to eradicate conservatives from the top brass in the military. Yeah. That's going on also. Now you have it also in our governmental system. The president himself, he, he basically has followed the communist playbook. They've opened up the borders. The stormtroopers have already arrived, Jesse. And now the police departments, they're under complete fire. So you have cities that are out of control, over 1,000% increase, for example, in New York City in crime. At the same time, they can't get people to be on the police department. Well, who's surprised? Right. Who's surprised? Yeah. Because they're completely attacked. Those are our bastions of freedom, and they're completely disintegrated as Marxism moves and marches on. Plus, we have the economy now becoming in tatters under President Biden. So we're, this is a perfect Marxist storm. And unless conservatives stand up, we're going to lose all that we thought and hold dear. Yeah. They are now talking about uh, flying the Black Lives Matter flags 
uh, I believe it, on the military bases or somewhere, counselors or somewhere, they want to fly the Black Lives Matter flags along with the American flag. You know what? When Trump was president, uh, you know, and, and Trump was running for office, military installations didn't want didn't want any of the workers there to put out a Trump supporting flag or anything like that. They didn't want, no, no, you right. can't do that. That's that's political. You can't hold them that. That's only because it was conservative political. But now that it's on the Marxist side, and BLM is an avowed Marxist organization, they make no bones about it. Their, their intent is to destroy and up, up in and up, cause upheaval in America. Now that's all right. So, see, that's where we're going. And if people don't see the direction that the stream is headed, uh, you know, it, it, takes, it takes courage to go upstream. But even the top brass in the military, they're just floating downstream. Uh, just for example, it's been going on for a long time. Our military has been utilized by the United Nations. We've taken our military, put them underneath. The United Nations ages in foreign wars. What's what's going on there? Well, even back when Bush, uh, George George W. President, he went to the United Nations to ask permission to go over to Iraq and invade. Why why was that the case? It was a tantamount admission that we are subservient to the United Nations. Yeah. So world government, Marxist government in America, that's what's coming. And the conservatives are in serious, serious trouble if we think that we can just sit by and say, well, God's in control. God may be in control, but he may be demanding that we participate also Absolutely. somehow in the fight for the right. That's right. It's interesting. They are, they are destroying monuments and statues and, and, and things that are value to us in this country while promoted Black Lives Matter. So if they should put up Black Lives Matter flags, I want the Confederate flag to go back up right next to Black Lives Matter flag. Because if we can have Black <laughs> Lives Matter, we can have the Confederate flags. That's exactly right. You know what? The, the, the sons of the Confederate veterans today simply stand for that very principle, and that is state sovereignty. Yeah. No one's standing for slavery they're standing for state sovereignty and that's the only way that we can preserve freedom yeah. and the confederate principles are exactly those state sovereignty the one thing i want to tell you you mentioned the christian churches the black churches and, and the universities and things like that i don't know if it's happening around the country yet but i know in southern california the universities the christian universities are corrupt now they are catering to women Blacks, LGBTQ. So the Christian church, uh, uni uh, universities are as bad as the non Christian now. In this state, I don't know what's happening around the other parts of the country. Well, that's right. And you know, around the country, that's, that is in making right now, where they are, through the so called Equality Act, seeking to make Christian colleges. And that's one of the things they put. Under the uh, under their microscope as Christian colleges, they want them to have LGBTQ clubs. They want to have uh, co-ed dormitories. They don't want any teaching against homosexuality. This is what Biden administration is in favor of. That's why uh, at this point, you know, people are acting real surprised about Biden. I have no patience for that. Yeah. None whatsoever. Yeah. Well, I didn't know where Biden was going. I says, you know what? We've been crying about it. He's been outspoken about it. The left has been outspoken about this is what they want. This is what Biden has preached before he got into office. So we have no excuse. This is exactly where he wanted to take us, and that's where he's taking us. And the attack is upon Christian colleges through such things as the Equality Act, which will demand that we have no more tax exempt status for religious organizations. So churches, Christian schools, they will be demanded to follow and, and tow the Marxist line, and particularly in this case, the LGBTQ agenda. Amazing. Let's go to Gerald, a first time call out of Maryland. Gerald, thank you for calling you on with Bill Lockwood. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I've morning. been calling. Uh, hey, Gerald. Uh, a little louder for me, Gerald. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. I just called to. Uh, make you aware um, I just uh, a question I had for, for Bill was 
uh, does he believe that Biden is a legitimate uh, president of the United States? And, does uh, he believe what, uh, uh, Gerald? Is, is Biden a legitimate president of the United States? Do you believe, Bill, that Joe Biden is a legitimate president of the United States? Is this question? No, I, no, I do not. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that the election was right. I don't believe it was fair. If if we don't have integrity of elections, we don't have a free country. No. And I refused at state levels and also at Supreme Court levels to go back and look at the serious, serious allegations that are taking place across the states, which we knew at the time. As a matter of fact. Uh, Mike Lindell, who's the uh, owner of, of My Pillow, has put out a video, a two-hour video, in which he interviews a number of senators, a number of election officials, and other individuals across the spectrum who tell us that that election was fraudulent. But no one is, wants to pay attention. Facebook has banned it. Facebook doesn't want to play a part of that. They don't want anything to do with that. But I believe that election was fraudulent, to answer Gerald's question. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. Skip is out of Augusta, Georgia. Skip, you're on with Bill Lockwood. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Bill. How hey. y'all doing? All is well, Skip. Thanks for calling. Skip. Look at here. I just wanted to ask ask you a question. When Jesus comes back on his second coming, is he going to come back as our brother or as our Lord? Did you hear that, Bill? Yeah, well, well, he comes back as our Lord, but he, we we know that he's uh, an elder brother, so to speak. Yeah. But he's also our Lord. He's and he's also the judge of all of the earth. So he'll come back and he'll judge us. And that, that at that time, uh, all the dead will be resurrected. John chapter five, twenty eight, twenty nine will stand before the judgment bar of God, and he'll make the separation as need be. So, I always, I always answer, look in as our. I always look at him as my Lord more than I do as my brother. I, you know, it's, it's some, it, just calling him my brother don't seem to be right. And just, you know, because God, I mean, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. You know, I look at him as a, more of a Lord than being my brother. I get confused with that. Well, you know what? Well, in Hebrews chapter 2, beginning in verse 10, uh, Jesus is referred to as our brother in the sense that where we're told that he would sing our, his, the Lord's praises amongst the brethren, amongst his brethren. So there is a brotherhood there, but, but you are right as far as, as what's happening in our society. We have very little recognition that he is the Lord and the king of the universe, and to him we must bow. And so it's not simply that uh, he's a brother in the sense that we can slap him on the back and say uh, he's a pal, but... <laughs> but, but nevertheless, uh, he is, you know, and that's why a lot of people want to take it. You know, they want to talk about he's just a just a, a fellow next door, you know. But but be that as it may, he is the sovereign Lord of the universe, and and we must give him deference, and we will bow to him. And every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. Philippians chapter two. The Bible also says, yeah. Skip, that he is the firstborn of many brothers, brothers, <laughs> and so yeah. Don't be scared, Skip. What the. I know what the <laughs> look here. I appreciate it. All and right. Both y'all are doing an awesome. Both y'all are doing an awesome job. And thank y'all for taking my call. All right. Thank you for calling, Skip. I I do appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Skip. All right. So be on telephone once again. You uh, first of all, last words on you. Telephones, how to get to you and how to help you out and all the good stuff. Well, thank you, Jesse. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. That's the YouTube channel. They can go and they um, can subscribe to that. American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com. If they go to the dot com address, there's a donate button there. They may donate uh, small portions. Anything helps, of course. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I always run in the red. Uh, I thought when I started all of this, I thought, well, I ha have something else to, to help make some money as well. But it's, it's actually a sinkhole. But be that as it may, I like doing it and I, I feel passionate about the issue. So, but those are the addresses to go to. Then, of course, writing for the Bible brand is another YouTube channel. So I have two, those two YouTube channels and then the web, web address as well. And then, of course, my sermons are on iowaparkcoc.org. And then one can look and see how I preach on different... I'm, I'm preaching right now in the book of James, for example, and we, we're starting in chapter two. I uh, started chapter two this last week. So 
um, at any rate, those are those how people can access me. Amazing. Bill, thank you so much for coming on. I, I really, really look forward to, to the last two seasons of the month. Stay out of the rain. Well, we're getting rain right now, so I'll have to, I'll have to run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Bill. God bless you, man. All right. Lord bless you, Jesse. Thank right. you for your work and your stand for truth. Right on. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now. Amazing. 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. Check out Bill Lockwood, American Liberty, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y, with Bill Lockwood, riding the Bible brand. Right. Riding the Bible brand. Check him out. I also support him, folks. He needs your support. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. 888-777-5373. 